G'day guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jaden and I upload a trip port every Thursday. I'm at Changi Airport Terminal 1 and today I'm flying on Nippon Airways ANA from here to Tokyo Narita. Now without further ado, let's go inside and check in. This is my second time this week waking up at 3, 4, 8, 6 a.m. flight. Unbelievable. However, those flights are usually cheaper, that's why I go for it. All Nippon Airways has three daily flights from Singapore to Tokyo two of which go to Haneda Airport and we're going to Narita today. You can't do self-check-in at Changi Airport for ANA. My guess is that most travellers are heading to America and the staff need to manually check for your COVID-19 status. At 4am, check-in and immigration were quick and easy and soon after I made it to the airside. You can imagine that most stores haven't opened yet for business but it's already quite hustling and bustling inside T1. If you go upstairs you can see that a lot of people are sleeping either on the ground or on the sofa. So today I'm flying in ANA economy with my Starlands Gold status. I technically have access to the Terminal 3 Chris Fly Gold Lounge, but it's too physical demanding for me to go there in the morning. So I decided to head to the SATS Premier Lounge, which is listed on my boarding pass. The SATS Lounge in T1 is actually quite cozy and warm. The sofas and chairs are comfortable and a lot of the floor area is carpeted. You have plants in every corner and the whole lounge is quite well lit. However, there's no windows here, so there's no natural lights. Now let's check out what they've got to offer food and beverages wise. For breakfast, western options you've got scrambled eggs, baked beans, tomatoes and potatoes. For something more local, you can make yourself a bowl of laksa. You can add as many broth as you want as well as condiments. For colder and continental options you've got yogurt and fruits. Alcohol is available at 5am in the morning. You can help yourself with a glass of wine and spirits. For sparkling, it's actually from France, but it's not from Champagne, so it's not Champagne. The laksa is really, really delish. The spice is definitely waking me up. Now let's go check out the shower room. The first thing that caught my attention is the Malacan tiles. So Malacca is a region in Malaysia. Their culture, infrastructure and design are heavily influenced by the Chinese, Dutch and Malays. So other than the tiles, the shower room is really modern and again very well lit. You've got space for your carry-on and the shower room itself is quite massive as well and you've got three coat hooks. So after the laksa and shower room tour, I've got about half an hour until I have to go to my boarding gate. I found myself a very comfortable pod. It's got a table and charging points. I took out my laptop and I worked a little bit. Before long, it's time to head to our boarding gate for our flight to Tokyo Narita. Here's our aircraft today. It's a five-year-old Onipon Airways Boeing 7879 Julia Alpha 898 Alpha. Good morning. Thank you. Welcome on board ANA 7879. My seat today 27A. It's the very last row in the forward economy cabin. Seat configuration on board is 333. Despite this configuration, it feels really spacious here because the space between every row is quite huge. I'll now go through the seat features with you guys. So we've got a cut hook, a touchscreen TV with a USB port and headphone jack. You can use the remote for games and audio control. Your tray table can be folded in half and moved back and forth. There's also a cup holder. Down here is your seat pocket. You've got an extra pouch for your personal items. Further down you've got a footrest and you can adjust the position. You can move it higher if you want. On board ANA 787 you've got 34 inches of legroom. That's fantastic considering most airlines would sell 34 inches of legroom as economy plus. And between every two seats you'll find a universal power socket underneath. Finally you'll find a headrest and it's adjustable. We're on a very empty flight today to Narita. Boarding complete at 15 minutes ahead of departure time. The cabin crew are now handing out arrival cards for Japan.
I'm guessing our flight today is about 10 to 15% full. It's going to be a very comfortable flight for all. The amenities you'll find on this 7 hour flight on your seat to Narita are headphones, pillow and blanket. Both the blankets and pillows are of cheaper quality. And look at the pillow, it's quite thin. Your seat recline is really generous and it's the same even if you're sitting at a back row. The seat back doesn't just go backwards but a seat cushion actually moves forward. This design minimizes the impact for the passenger behind you when you recline but it reduces your leg space. Personally I do prefer this design, it's fairer and I actually find it more comfortable, it's a bit more economic. Hello there, welcome on board Orni Pond 7879 Lavatory, this is just behind my seat 27k. So relatively sizable very clean obviously we just took off I've got my Qantas PJ that I'm gonna change into later and I got my hotel slippers already you've got Japanese bidet toilets and your magical buttons right here for your bum bum you've got a mirror and handle and two cooks itchy knee Ta-da! Now I'm wearing loosely and comfortably, and I'm also using my coat hooks. Watching the sunrise from a MC787 cabin is a different vibe, because the windows are larger, and also you don't have other people's head obstructing your view. The meal service is about to begin, so I pull down my tray table. The service is really quick, because it's a very empty cabin. Within 5 minutes, the cabin crew reached my row. So today, breakfast, you've got two options, and you're given a card to show you the illustrations of both options. For Japanese, you've got salmon, chicken, egg, rice. For Western option, it's an omelette with chicken sausage and potato. Have you decided? Yeah, egg, please. Thank you. So breakfast has been served, let's dig into it. So today I forgot to order a special meal, so I'm breaking my diet. For starter, we've got strawberry yogurt and fruits. We've also got soba noodles. Along with that, you get noodle sauce and seaweed. On a and economy, you get metal utensils. For the main course, I went for the Japanese, minced chicken with salmon and egg rice. For drinks, I went for hot green tea, and a bottle of water comes with every meal. So the main portion is actually quite tiny, but considering that you get yogurt, fruits and soba noodles, it's completely okay. This is one delicious meal. You can almost never go wrong on board a Japanese carrier with their onboard catering. The presentation is always excellent, even in economy, and you always get a lot of side dishes. And then you can always wash it down with hot green tea. If you're enjoying this video so far, please leave a like, comment down below, share this video with your friends, and most importantly, subscribe if you haven't done so. Each and every of your action is going to help the growth of my channel. Currently, only about 25% of you watching are subscribed to my channel. If everyone hits the subscribe button right now, I'll easily get 100k soon. So after a delicious heartful breakfast, it's time to lie down and catch up on my sleep. I woke up at 3am for this flight, so a lot of catching up to do.
It sounded like we had an Australian Japanese pilot. He did both a Japanese and English announcement himself, and his English was so Australian. Right now, I'm checking out the ANA in flight entertainment. I found the system to be not very user friendly. It's a bit old school, and it doesn't display the movie cover unless you click in it. The in flight map is interactive, you can play with it, and also zoom in and zoom out to wherever you want. We're currently flying south of Vietnam and north of Sabah, Malaysia. They do offer live TV options, CNN, NHK, and a sports channel. Wi Fi with internet access is available for purchase. The cheapest plan is $6.95 for half an hour. For the full flight, it's $21.95. Throughout the flight, the cabin crew would come down the aisle countless of times to give out water, coffee and tea. And about an hour and a half before we land into Tokyo, the cabin crew began the second meal service. It's just a light refreshment this time. We got an apple pastry, there's no beverage cart, but the crew would come around again for coffee, tea and water. So this apple pastry is cold. It's okay taste-wise, but I prefer the one at McDonald's. I guess it's a farewell gift, they're giving everybody a uh, candy. The cabin crew is now asking everybody to fasten up for the landing. And we're about to descend into Narita, so let's quickly conclude this trip port with a and right here, right now. Our journey today started at Changi Airport. Check-in was quick and easy despite the checks for USA and Canada. I'm flying onwards to San Francisco with United and then Vancouver as well, so there were a few documents to check. The SATS Premier Lounge is really nice. Currently, I actually don't have a preference whether I prefer this or the Chris Fly Gold Lounge in Terminal 3. I'll just go to the one closer to my gate. Once on board, we received a warm welcome from our cabin crew. I found my seat area to be really spacious, despite the 333 configuration. The leg room was really great, and we even got a foot rest. And most importantly, we got a flat bed for this entire 7 hour to Tokyo, so the whole ride for me was really comfortable. For the food and beverages, ANA does it really well. The first meal service was excellent. For the second meal, it was basic, nothing too special. The cabin crew service was overall excellent. We did have some really warm and nice cabin crew with a friendly smile, but we also had a cabin crew or two who didn't smile at all or say anything when they served me something like a tea or coffee. Even after I said my thank you to them, they were just a little bit cold, but that's only a minority of them. Now for your information, flying between Singapore and Narita with ANA will cost you $900 return. But if you're flying onwards to America or Canada, you're just looking at paying about 150 more. So value-wise, if you're heading towards North America, it's a lot cheaper. So that's it for the conclusion today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like, comment down below, and share this video with your friends. And again, subscribe, please, if you haven't done so. Feel free to add me or follow me on my socials, like Instagram, Facebook, Be Real, Snapchat, and TikTok. And we're now on our final approach into Narita. Please enjoy the rest of the video, and at the end, I'll do a Q&A, which I haven't done in the longest while. See you later. Bye-bye.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Good day, everyone, Waffle Ice Squad. Welcome back to another q and I've not done that in a while, so let's get into it right now. So, Mike is asking the top three airlines that I want to fly, but I haven't. So, LATAM's one of them. So I really want to explore South America and fly with LATAM because it's uh, X1 World, but also their partner with Delta, which I've got gold status with. So it'll be fun checking out the lounges and stuff. So other than LATAM, South African Airways, I wanna check out. Always wanted to visit South America. The third one I would say, Asiana. Uh, I wanna fly their A380. I think they're currently flying them to Hong Kong. Second question from Peter. How do you handle jet lag with so many flights? So I have this special ability where I could sleep so much. So I think most people sleep six, or eight hours a day. I sleep up to 12 to 15, up to 12 to 15, like I need 10. So for example, a week ago I did San Francisco to Singapore. I slept 11 hours uh, with a break in between. 11 hours, like it was very good, like perfect for my body. Uh, but how do I handle the jet lag? I think while having that ability, I can also stay awake for a really long time. So if it's a day flight, I force myself to stay awake. Uh, that way, when I get to my destination, it should be dark and then I could go to bed right away. If it's an overnight flight all the way, I can sleep all the way. Now, moving on. Vincent is asking my favourite thing to do in Saigon, Vietnam. Uh, I would say food. Uh, lots of good Vietnamese food. Uh, Western food is quite good there as well. It's cheap. Uh, I think there's a pizza place called 4P. Very good pizza. One of the best ones I've ever had. How do you take advantage of your frequent flyer status? Uh, obviously, go to the lounges, take a shower, have a champagne. Um, I think the most that I take out of it is actually baggage allowance for myself. Uh, especially when I book basic economy in America, you don't get uh, any allowance with that basic, but with your gold status, you can check in one. And also for other travelers in your booking, they get the same allowance as you. And also in America, like I got Delta, they give you unlimited upgrades on their short haul flights. Which airline business class would you recommend for a long haul flight? I, I guess that depends on what's your priority. Do you prioritize a big, comfortable bed, uh, food or service? Bed wise, I would say Cafe is quite good. United Polaris is quite good as well. Um, for food, maybe Singapore Airlines. Qantas can be a hit and a miss, but when it's good, it's really good. Um, if you like having a bar, Amrex, Qatar, Etihad. What camera do you use to film your videos? I use iPhone 14 Pro, not Max. Do you prefer flying Qantas or Air New Zealand? So I've only ever taken Air New Zealand once, so it's hard to compare, but Air New Zealand stands out to me because they have free Wi-Fi and the planes are generally newer. That being said, Qantas is introducing is introducing Wi-Fi on their international flights later this year. What made you start traveling the world and posting videos? Who was the inspiration? So let's start with the inspiration part. Um, there were a few channels that I started watching when I was in middle and high school, like Nonstop Dan, Simply Aviation, Sam Choi. So they were all my inspiration. Um, what made me start though, because um, I was a international student from Hong Kong studying in Adelaide. So every year I had to travel between Adelaide and Hong Kong at least four times a year because boarding house kicks you out during semester and term breaks. So I had, to quite, I had to fly 
quite a lot and uh, I was a bit bored so I started filming and ended up doing true reports just as a hobby you know but it's, it's now like my career. Have you ever felt anxious on a flight going through severe turbulence or anything like that? Not at all, I love turbulence. Do you have any packing tips? Um, row your clothes if you need to save space, but be careful because when you row them, it gives you the uh, perception that you've got lots of space, which is true, but when you row everything and you stack them all up, it can get heavy and it may go over your allowance. Heavier stuff down the bottom near the wheels, you don't want to... Um, have lighter stuff down there and break them. Uh, fragile stuff, wrap it with your socks, with your beanie. If you have a box for that particular item, even better. Like for my microphone, I keep my box when I bought them. I recently went to Canada and I bought maple syrup and I used my socks to wrap them around. Do you have a preference, left or right side of the plane? Uh, I don't, but I usually go for the side where I see the sunset or sunrise. So I will look at the map, let's say I'm flying from Australia to Hong Kong, Australia to Hong Kong, a day flight. So I'm going to reach Hong Kong at night. So I'm definitely picking the A side, so left hand side, because the sunrise is going to be there. On the other side, I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see nothing. How are you able to fly so often while you're still at uni? So I finished uni just over a year ago, um, but even so, I was able to travel quite a lot domestically during COVID because uh, uni wasn't every day. It's about three to four days a week, and I get long weekends to travel around Australia. And also, I went to New Zealand one time. Guan says Hong Kong Lounge, uh, did you miss it? Absolutely, like, I can't wait to go back there. We opened a few weeks ago, New York cheesecake, oh, pork fries, yeah, 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 yeah. They're, they're not vegan, but I'm gonna break my diet once maybe. What's your favorite airline? Haha, <laughs> joking. Yeah, so I actually specifically ask people to not ask me questions like that because I've answered them many, many times, but yeah, my favourite would be Cafe Quantis, BA, Virgin Australia, Virgin Atlantic. So the real question is, do you think Singapore Airlines standards have dropped over time? Uh, um, I think so, I'm afraid. So although during COVID everyone dropped their standards, like giving you less food, no hot towels, no menus, etc. A lot of them have brought them back. But Singapore hasn't really. Singapore, they're doing menus now in business, but not in economy. There's no hot towels across all cabins, I believe. Um, what else? I think they're lounges except for the first class, maybe. It's nothing to brag about, really. Um, the economy, food, uh, the portion is getting a lot smaller including on long-haul flights, especially to Australia, you only, get, you only get one meal now on Red Eye. What are three things you always forget to pack? Good question. Uh, headphones. Um, I don't know. Uh, sometimes when I travel from like Australia to the Northern Hemisphere, it's a totally different climate and I will forget to pack like the right clothes, like I would be packing enough winter clothes, for example, but not enough summer clothes. Um, Hong Kong ID card, I've forgotten it at least twice this year. <laughs> um, so Hong Kong ID card, you need that to get into Hong Kong. Not a big deal though, if you don't remember, you can use your passport and explain it to the officer that you forgot. But it's annoying because in Hong Kong, it's a legal requirement that you carry a form of ID anywhere you go. Um, so I suppose foreigners would carry your passports. So I did that twice this year. I carried my passport everywhere I went in Hong Kong. So Hong Kong ID is just a card and you use that for immigration as well. And it's so easy because you just put the card into the machine, fingerprint, done, you're gone within 
literally 10 seconds. It's so easy. So yeah, that's all the questions I've got today. I hope you enjoyed. Oopsie. And uh, I will see you next week. I want to I want to say goodbye to you, but with Lily, but Lily's gone. I don't know where she is. Ooh. But anyway, I'll see you next week. Hopefully with Lily. Bye. Blue, blue. Meow. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs>